Right, folks, it's KP's video news coming to you with the real, coming to you with the raw. Black owned businesses hit harder during pandemic and need more aid. And black owned businesses have been hit harder than, than their white owned counterparts during the coronavirus pandemic. A New York paper uh, released Tuesday found just 20% of paycheck protection program loans went to areas that had the highest concentration of black owned businesses. The paper argues that the future relief efforts from Congress should focus on these firms. Black-owned businesses have suffered disproportionately during the coronavirus pandemic and should be the target of future economic recovery efforts, according to the analysis uh, the Federal Reserve released Tuesday. Researchers at the Central Bank New York District further found that COVID-19 cases are concentrated in areas that are more predominantly populated by blacks causing a further hit to those businesses. The issue is compounded by lack of access to adequate funding, including the rescue loans provided through the Paycheck Protection Program. Just 20% of PPP loans went to areas that had significant concentration of black owned businesses, wrote uh, the Fed analyst Claire, Claire Mills and Jessica Batisto. And uh, given the high geographic concentration of firm activity and the black population in general, business disruptions in these particular places can have outsized effects on African American well being at large. The paper comes at, as the White House and Congressional Democrats are trying to work out the details on additional relief efforts from the unprecedented economic and empowerment. And, and, un and employment hit during the pandemic. Extended unemployment benefits expired at the end of July and the extent to which they will be continued is a main sticking point in the talks. However, the analysis say additional funding also should focus on correcting racial disparities. To have the greatest impact, the next round of COVID-19 relief should be more targeted geographically to focus on the hardest hit areas and communities that lack co uh, critical infrastructure, hospitals, banks, to, uh, uh, to alleviate the gaps. The problem showed in the distribution of PPP loans. For instance, just 7% of businesses in the Bronx, New York received loans, 11% in Queens, and 11% uh, in Wayne County. Uh, Wayne County, Michigan, and 12% in Prince George's County, Maryland. All areas among the highest nationally uh, in concentrations of black residents and businesses. Loans from the first, first round of PPP were not correlated with the number of COVID cases in the state, uh, the Fed paper said. Instead, more likely reasons for business, businesses receiving these loans included having a prior banking relationship as well as community banks market share. Having a relationship with banks was another significant issue. More than three times the amount of black employer firms, 37.9% said they didn't apply for financing for fear of being turned down than white uh, owned firms. The racial disparities in bank relationships prior to COVID-19 detail here raised structural que uh, questions about the presence of banks and access to credit and communities of color, questions that have heightened significance when banks are relied on to administer federal taxpayer supported relief, as is uh, the case with PPP. So, no banks in the hood, that means you get no money. Yep, and those same banks were issuing out huge amounts of money to uh, their, their biggest investors, huge amounts, millions millions but small small businesses and small companies like that nope they uh they couldn't get it it was almost impossible so uh let me stay on point here with the uh i'm gonna go to this story here then i'm gonna come back to that other one the 600 dollars employment boost is gone that leaves some people with just five bucks a week 
Five bucks a week, man, come on now. Congress didn't extend a $600 a week boost to unemployment benefits, which expired on July 31st. That leaves aid recipients with typical state benefits in some states that can amount to as little as 5 to $10 a week. That's a damn shame. Democrats and Republicans are still negotiating what to do. Millions of Americans are getting a big cut in their unemployment checks after the expiration of the policy that offered an extra $600 a week in aid. A subset of workers, such as part-timers, low-wage workers, and some freelancers and contractors will feel that cut more accurate, acutely than others. The weekly $600 federal supplement to unemployment benefits part of the federal coronavirus relief enacted in March came on top of typical aid that states pay and a meager unemployment benefits. However, state aid can vary significantly from person to person. It falls in a range between a minimum and a maximum value. Most states pay a minimum below $100 a week. Hawaii, for example, pays $5 a week on the low end. It's not much higher in other states like Louisiana, $10, Connecticut, $15, North Carolina, $15, Nevada, $16, Oklahoma, $16, and Delaware, $20. Now, what are people supposed to do with $5, $10, $15, $20 a week? What are they supposed to do with that? Come on now. Arizona and Washington State have the highest minimums, just as uh, just shy of $190 a week. And the U.S. average is only $61 a week. The federal unemployment supplement boosted these minimum payments to $600 a week. And uh, so, but that policy expired, meaning people receiving the minimum uh, or close to the minimum will in some cases be relying on just a few dollars a week in aid. Unemployment benefits can be a meager without a federal supplement, a senior uh, fellow at, uh, especially at a time when it's very difficult for many people to even find a job. Democrats and Republicans are still negotiating on what to do, including whether to extend or replace a $600 a week supplement. Man, this is uh, crazy, man. Crazy. I had no idea five because five dollars and, and all that. I mean, the last time I had unemployment was like in the seventies, and even then I was getting two hundred dollars a week. I don't understand this five dollar five dollar week stuff. Uh, oh, anyway, uh, New York set up quarantine checkpoints as this toughness state state uh, travel restrictions, and uh, New York City is setting up quarantine checkpoints at key entry points along main bridges and tunnels to the city to screen some incoming travelers. Travelers coming in from those states will be given information about the quarantine. They will be reminded that it is required, not optional. And New York is setting up quarantine checkpoint, checkpoints. And uh, along, alongside of that, it says many bridges and tunnels to the city to screen travelers coming from more than 30 states uh, that had bad coronavirus outbreaks, and that's what he just stated uh, today. So travelers coming in from those states will be given information about the quarantine. They will be reminded that it is required, not optional. They'll be reminded that failure to quarantine is a violation of state law, and it comes with serious penalties. And uh, checkpoints began today, and Ted, Ted Long head of New York City's Test and Trace Corp said that a fifth of all new coronavirus cases in New York City are from out-of-state travelers. The new agency is deploying teams to Penn State, uh, Penn Station and the Port Authority bus terminal starting Thursday. They are checking in on travelers through, uh, through calls and text messages. And if we can't get through to you on the phone, we've deployed teams that are now knocking on your door and making sure you're safe, Long said. We want you to come to New York City, but you need to uh, safely separate for two weeks, 14 days when you arrive to keep New York City safe. Safe. So that means you got to quarantine for 14 days if you're going to New York City. You can't be out walking around, otherwise you're going to get arrested. And uh, Long said the city will, will help those quarantining with free food, deliveries, assistance with medications, 
telehealth services or even the hotel stay. We know that it's not easy to get through a two week period of self separation, but it's incredibly important and we're going to do everything in our power to help you. And uh, uh, Gov uh, New York Governor uh, uh, Cuomo alongside with New York Governor Murphy issued the joint travel advisory in late June ordering travelers from the state with significant COVID-19 uh, community-wide spread to quarantine for 14 days. The original order applied to only nine states. Now that includes 30 states. It went from nine states all the way up to 30 states. So it's 30 states out there that got a bad outbreaks right now. In New York, which had the worst outbreak from the beginning and kind of getting it under control, got it under control. They don't want another flare-up. And uh, New, New York had previously stationed enforcement team from the state's Department of Health at the city's major airports to ensure compliance with the advisory. All passengers from incoming flights from states in the advisory are required to fill out a traveler form. The city has also partnered with hotels, train, bus, and car rental companies, requiring anyone booking a stay in New York City to fill out the travel form uh, so the test and Trace Corp can locate them and monitor travelers in isolation. People who violate the state's order will be subject to fines and a mandatory quarantine, Cuomo said. Uh, he said, and the fines will be $2,000 for the first violation, $5,000 for the second violation, and up to $10,000, up to $10,000, man, if they cause harm. Uh, we need to make sure that the quarantine becomes stronger every day and that the law comes uh, comes to life more every day. The mayor's announcement comes after Cuomo has repeatedly criticized local government and law enforcement in the state for not executing his executive orders, especially regarding bars. While the state has made progress suppressing its outbreak, once considered the epicenter of the nation, Cuomo modified New York City's phase four reopening by barring restaurants from opening their indoor dining spaces as uh, cases in other states surged. So they're doing what they got to do, folks. Go to New York. You better plan on staying in your hotel for 14 days because you will not be allowed to walk the streets for two weeks. 14-day quarantine, mandatory 14-day quarantine in, in New York City if you're from out of state. And it's 30, 30 out of 50 states, 30 states are on this list. And I'm not going to even go through that whole list of reading them all. You're just going to have to do a little homework for yourself on that one. Plan on going to New York. Do the homework before you go there. Otherwise, you'll be open and ready for a rude awakening. This video news is KPFK Radio. That's right, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all.